Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Michal Hanteřík from Runcast. Um, I'd like to welcome you guys on our webinar, uh, How to Avoid Purple Skin of Death. I'm here with uh, Aileen, our CTO. Hello Aileen, how are you today? Hello Michal, hello everyone. I'm doing fine, excited. Great, so we're ready for a webinar. Uh, I still see some people joining uh, uh, the panelists, so please wait two more minutes and we will start shortly. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. Uh, let's get started. Again, thank you for coming today uh, and welcome to the Runecast webinar. Uh, I will show the agenda uh, so you guys know what's uh, on plan for today. So first of all, uh, again, uh, Michal Nčeřík, uh, Product Manager with the Runecast, uh, together today with uh, my guest Eileen Sully, our CTO, and also the highly certified uh, guy of VMware, uh, VCAP at DCD. So uh, we will certainly hear some interesting stories from him during our uh, uh, session. And uh, because Runcast is quite a new company, I cannot start differently than uh, introducing a little bit uh, what we do, uh, what's our product about and what problems uh, we are solving. And then uh, I would like to give a word to Aileen, uh, who will tell you a little bit from his uh, quite a uh, quite large experience uh, for managing data centers and uh, especially how to fight with the purple screen of that uh, VSOD is uh, one of the most annoying things uh, that you can meet when you're managing the uh, virtualized VMware setups. At the end of the session, uh, which will be 30 minutes, uh, there will be some space for Q&As. Uh, however, there is a Q&A panel as a part of this uh, GoToMeeting webinar, so please, uh, anytime you have a question, uh, feel free to write it down and uh, we would uh, you know, be happy to answer it also during our presentation. Great, uh, let's get started. Rungast, uh, as I said, quite a new company for many of you, but for some in uh, VMware uh, could be actually already known. It was founded in 2015. Uh, we are kind of a multicultural uh, company having offices in the UK, uh, Czech Republic, so you can hear it in my accent, uh, Australia, and also United States. The founders are actually VMware experts uh, with quite a long experience in maintaining and managing and building uh, data centers at IBM. And uh, one of the reasons they decided to actually found the company was uh, a particular problem they've seen can be really solved elegantly and can help many people and many IT admins uh, from the pains of uh, issues and the problem with the data centers and the manual, I would say, uh, uh, work that are related to that. So uh, they've seen that there is a potential to really speed up the troubleshooting and, uh, and I would say the configuration issues uh, that are appearing uh, very, very, you know, often in data centers, automated, and uh, they decided to, you know, this create a company and uh, write and build the tool uh, that automates this VMware expertise and give it to the IT admin hands. Our mission is to help admins to build and operate their data centers. That's it. It's as simple, and uh, we do maximum in our tool uh, to really 
avoid any problems that are related to this virtualized world. Now, why this? As I said, uh, the founders see a big opportunity, but what that opportunity really meant at that time and what it still means. Uh, we can say that uh, from the experience, 90% um, of the VMware vSphere issues were caused by known and documented issues. Um, so you can take it as that, that it's just the lack of uh, the proper uh, organization of the configuration, proper auditing and checks uh, to ensure that your data centers are actually in the best condition. And uh, uh, to do so in reality, you need to spend a lot of time, a lot of manual time and of your time to ensure that almost with every single new deployment, every single new update or patch, your configuration is still uh, in a perfect condition in regards to those existing uh, uh, knowledge uh, of VMware. And the VMware does a great job uh, documenting all these issues. Uh, so it's great that we actually have this knowledge base and the database that's publicly available. And uh, many of you probably Googling for some KBs or symptoms every other day if there is some uh, potential threat or issue with your um, VMware assets. However, uh, it's not in a, uh, you know, human possibilities to do it on a regular basis because uh, IP admins, they, they wear many hats and it's not possible uh, that they would spend so much time just checking about the actual state of knowledge base and uh, their configuration on the environment. That means uh, we decided to tackle this problem and solve those 90% of issues uh, that almost every single data center is suffering from. And how? With Runecast Analyzer. What the Runecast Analyzer does is a detection and automation of the VMware knowledge base against the configuration of your vSphere uh, uh, product, which means vCenter, uh, ESXi hosts, and virtual machines. It's able to produce uh, dozens of thousands of checks against the configurations, compare it with the existing knowledge base, and then report the problems that are detected. It also informs you how uh, you should fix those issues, and it comes with a uh, priority stake, so you have a better visibility into uh, what issues should be solved uh, primarily and uh, what issues may not have as big impact on your infrastructure. Together with that, uh, we also added uh, two more important aspects uh, into, our, uh, into our product, which is security, and uh, we implemented VMware security hardening guides and these are stick which again, we are able to automatically detect and tell you like what rules you already implemented right and what rules you still need to uh, implement properly. And together with the last uh, aspect of how to keep the data center uh, in the best condition is uh, to implement best practices. And for many folks, this is still nice to have and very time consuming. And this is the very last area uh, where uh, the Runecast really helps and uh, speed up the thing, uh, make it less painful to optimize your data centers on a daily basis by automating those best practices. Well, that's a, a lot of words. So uh, before we go to the uh, purpose hint of that, I would like to just briefly touch the architecture of our product so you guys can understand better how it works. First of all, um, and it's very important to say that Runecast Analyzer can um, work in fully offline environment. So we are not a cloud service. Uh, no logs or no data are pending between the appliance and the internet service or Runecast server. So you simply install the OVA uh, template, some on your VMware, um, VMware virtual machine and host, and then a scan attached vCenters. And that's it. Uh, we typically need to read only uh, privileges or uh, credentials or admins. And uh, we scan your infrastructure that typically takes uh, one, two, three minutes and gives you uh, the results of the issues. The updates are applied, updates of the, I mean, the uh, knowledge based database are applied even uh, through the online connection or offline. So you just download it and then transfer to this Runecast uh, instance. Okay, um, and uh, to start an um, alien session about PSOD, I think it would be good to a little bit introduce uh, uh, the environment of uh, Runecast Analyzer. So let me show you a little bit uh, 
how it works. Let me log in. We have actually an uh, online web uh, demo available, so any of you may go later on uh, and uh, try it out. And what you are looking on at right now is uh, main dashboard. And I already attached a few vCenters. Uh, I think, yes, four vCenters at this moment. And I scan them. And what we see here is basically the uh, summary of the issue. Um, you can take it from, let's say, the uh, criticality or severity, uh, drilling down to the critical major or medium issues, or you can use uh, this uh, virtualized stack uh, overview, which uh, divides the uh, issues per uh, the virtualized segments or the VMware segments like uh, virtual machines, network storage, or management. And uh, this would help you to understand how many issues you have and where they are related to your what are they impacting uh, uh, in your infrastructure? So for example, I may go here and I see for my storage uh, uh, layer, I have one critical issue. And if I click on that, it takes me to the particular, uh, particular problem here. I can expand the problem. I can read the symptoms. I can search through that, of course, uh, if I'm looking for some particular uh, keyword. And then when I go to findings, I basically see the objects that are impacted by that. Uh, I see in this case that there is a, a need to check the host adapter driver version and so on. And then I can go back and I can uh, look for the resolution. Uh, so for example, in this case, I should uh, update the driver. So it's very simple as you see, you know, uh, you can just need to focus on the area uh, of your preference, either from the layer perspective or the criticality. If you would like to continue with best practices implementation, simply go to the best practice list. And uh, again, we scan to an environment and we are reporting what best practices and uh, severity uh, is detected, what's already passed, so what's implemented and what it's not. As well as security hardening, you can go with the VMware guidelines uh, checks or disastic. So this way you can repeat um, the scan after your fixing and patching an environment to ensure that every single um, every single uh, new instance or configuration change is still uh, uh, according to the best practices or the security appliance. And last but not least, uh, we also working with log files. So we have this uh, KBs discovered and uh, verbose dashboard links here. And actually, this is very powerful uh, because uh, our VMware experts predefine, uh, let's say, the template or uh, search patterns in the logs we're collecting from your vCenters, hosts, or our machines. And uh, for example, if you select fails to uh, pattern or a template, search template, then we automatically, uh, in real time, detect the, the most uh, occurring or recurring uh, phrases or the, I would say the errors within those files. So you can see here in this bottom line, what are the most uh, appearing uh, issues. And you can still like drill down into the particular uh, details and see if there's any spike. So if there is any suspicious behavior, and then we always give you the most recurring uh, error message, which helps you really discover something that's not even covered by the knowledge base. So this is a really powerful tool. And of course, uh, if there is something uh, regarding the KB, then we display uh, uh, the root cause and how to fix it. So this is the very brief and 10,000 feet overview of the product and the dashboard. And with these words, I would like to uh, pass my word to uh, Aileen, and he will continue actually with uh, the phenomenon called purpose of death and uh, how we can actually mitigate that problem. Aileen? Yeah, thank you, Michal. Um... So let me take the presenter role. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you confirm that you see my screen? I do. All right. Yeah, so um, as Michal mentioned earlier, um, I started my IT journey as an engineer uh, supporting large enterprise virtualized environments for, uh, for IBM. And uh, for me at that point, the dreaded PSOD was the biggest issue we could suffer in any of those environments. And um, yeah, so what actually is it? So PSOD stands for Purple Screen of Death. It's VMware's equivalent of the Windows Blue Screen of Death. 
Um, and it's a diagnostic screen uh, with a white font on a, on a purple background, as you can see in the attached uh, screenshot. Um, that is displayed when the VM kernel of an ESXi um, experiences a critical error and becomes inoperative and it just terminates any virtual machines that are running or any services that are running on that, uh, on that host. Uh, it's usually caused um, by, um, by hardware errors, uh, uh, mostly um, by driver or firmware uh, incompatibilities with the code uh, or with the, with the specific version that, uh, that you're running. Um, or by some um, software bugs, like uh, one of the most uh, known be being the assert uh, errors. Um, it is, it's usually displayed uh, on the console of the host, but it also generates a dump file that you can actually download uh, from the host for troubleshooting purposes. Uh, so um, yeah, attached, uh, you will see also the um, uh, an example of, uh, of a screenshot, but let me just open open it yeah, to make it a bit bigger so it's, uh, it's better for the visibility. So it contains really important information for troubleshooting. Um, it, uh, it contains the, the version, including the exact release build, so you know exactly uh, which build you have there, uh, which narrows a bit the, the troubleshooting. And then the, the, two, the next lines are probably the, the two most important lines because they tell you exactly the, um, um, the specific error that happened and all the other information here uh, on the bottom is just um, some more um, detailed description of the exact uh, root cause of the issue. Another important thing is also the, the uptime that um, uh, you have uh, for that host. Um, yeah, so as I said, this is only available on the console. Um, the dump is, the disk dump is really important if you want to troubleshoot. Uh, because um, yeah, the, the, the console may not be available or you may need to actually go in the data center to, to be able to take a picture of it. Or, so yeah, um, the dump is also very important for, for the troubleshooting. And now that we saw what a purple screen of death is, let's see how we can actually avoid it or what we can do about that. So um, I think everyone will prefer to, to prevent having purple screen of death because they are really um, um, this, uh, uh, affecting the environment in a, in a really bad way by um, having these outages and you can have really big parts of the environment uh, taken off by, by, by these issues. So um, one of the most important thing that you can actually do is uh, to make sure that the patches for vCenter and ESXi are applied. And um, yeah, the, the best way for doing that is actually to have update manager configured and uh, regularly check for, uh, for any updates and patches that are released by, by VMware and um, making sure that uh, you apply them uh, using the, the best practices. So in a staging or testing area, and um, if that's okay, then you can also apply it for the rest of the service in production. Um, you should also keep your drivers and firmware up to date. And uh, related to, to this, um, also make sure that um, your hardware is compatible with the version or uh, with, the, with the features that you're using from the, from the vSphere stack. And I'm pretty sure that uh, everyone knows how to do that, but let me just also re reiterate this. So it, VMware provides the compatibility guide and you can just um, come here and um, select the vendor that you have for, for the hardware, either the, the server or maybe the components of the server that you're using, uh, select the version that you want to check against. And you, you can also check the features or some specific CPU uh, series and then uh, just look at the results there. So if I would like to see if my HP ProLiant servers are compatible with some specific vs uh, vSphere versions, yeah, this is the, the way to come and uh, to confirm that. So this is quite a, an important step. Um, yeah, and um, another critical thing is to, to know your enemy. So we, we call the, the PSOD the purple screen of death monster because it really uh, behaves like a monster in the data center. And um, it's very important to research the scenarios that can lead actually to a purple screen of death because in some cases, even if you cover the first three bullet points or even if you have the, the latest patches installed and even if you have all the firmware up to date, and your hardware is on the home, uh, hardware compatibility list, 
still there are some known purple screen of death issues which are caused even by the default settings on, on VMware. So you need to make sure that you're covering also that. And this is probably one of the trickiest um, uh, parts of uh, trying to prevent a, perf a purple screen of death. And you can do that by um, actually looking at the, at the VMware knowledge base. This is the most important resource that, uh, that you can use. And just by looking for purple screen or PSOD, here you get the list of, uh, of all the articles which are related to that. And um, yeah, there are some of the articles which are describing like best practices or how to actually ensure that your um, environment is uh, ready for a PSOD, even if it happens. And I'll also cover that a bit later. But you can also um, check for the, for the common and documented purpose screen of death uh, cases. And another useful resource still from the, from the knowledge base um, is uh, this KB, which actually describes how to interpret. So again, by knowing your enemy, you also understand the behavior and you also understand how to actually um, understand the, the dump, which is dis uh, displayed either on the screen or um, how to analyze the, the dump file, uh, which is generated by, um, by VMware. What's typically required to analyze the dump file? Can I do it just like looking at the screen or I need some kind of a utility or tool? to understand better like what's inside? Uh, well, actually looking at the screen will give you some information, but uh, it's not the whole needed information. So actually the, the best practice is to configure a, a core dump collector somewhere in the network. So in case your host uh, dies, then the, the core dump will be actually shipped to that uh, collector. And there you can actually unzip it and then uh, start investigation. I would also recommend um, uh, going back to, to the server after you recover it. So the only way uh, to recover a purpose screen of this server is to reboot it. Mm -hmm. And after you recover it, you can also uh, download the, the log bundle and you can, again, look through the, through the log files, see the events which uh, preceded this event uh, in order to understand and to, to find the root cause of the, of the problem. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So it uh, looks like a lot of work. I would say. Manual yes, work. it is. <laughs> it is a lot of manual work. Uh, and as I said, yeah, knowing the enemy is uh, probably the, the most uh, important. And uh, just let me also briefly show you how we at Runcast managed to uh, tackle this problem. Because yeah, as Michal mentioned earlier, uh, we started Runcast mainly because we, we saw a, a gap in the, in the tooling. And uh, we are facing many issues which were already known and documented and purpose screen of death. Most of them are already known. So um, we have all the information, the knowledge base. It's better to leverage that and to uh, avoid these issues. So let me go back to uh, the Runcast uh, UI. So um, here in the Discover, the uh, KBs on, on our test environment, we have several uh, potential purple screen of death triggering configurations. And uh, if I drill down into, into this one, for example, um, we have all the information of the KB here. We also have the findings so we can see on which hosts in our environment this may appear. And we can also see why exactly. So here is mentioned that uh, the parameter is set to this value. And if we go back to the KB, uh, if I scroll down, you will see that this KB it affects basically all the, um, um, all the SXI 6.0 hosts. And uh, there is no patch for this and also another thing is that this can happen with the default configuration. So um, there is only one workaround that you have to apply. But in order to be aware of this, you actually need to research. So that's why I was mentioning earlier that you need to go to the VMware knowledge base. You need to understand the potential um, scenarios that can lead to a purpose screen of death. And that's what we are trying to, to help. Uh, and that's the, the value that we are adding by uh, actually identifying these conditions in your environment automatically and reporting them mm -hmm. here. So I think you mentioned actually a great point um, that it's simply not enough to patch your environment, even though sometimes uh, it's patch hell uh, to keep up uh, with the updates. Uh, but sometimes really there is no way how you can prevent it uh, other than really study and be prepared, as you mentioned. Exactly. Like this case shows. That's yeah. interesting. It's, it's actually very important. So it's, very, it, it's crucial that you ensure that all the patches are applied, firmware is applied, and you make sure that hardware compatibility list is, uh, is uh, satisfied. 
but still this will not prevent everything and even knowing all the all the conditions and uh, trying to prepare for them uh, will will still not avoid because there may still be some purple screen of deaths which are totally unknown so some unidentified software bugs that can just come up you can be the unlucky guy who will mm -hmm. suffer it the yeah. first time that's the nine percent uh, yeah obviously. and for that and for that uh, we actually um, need to to be prepared because we can't fully avoid purple screen of death uh, we need to be uh, very well prepared for that so one way or one of the first ways and the most important is actually to leverage the vSphere functionality. So HA, you need to configure high availability. So in case one host down uh, goes down because of a PSOD, those VMs can be restarted on another host. Or if you have some really critical virtual machines, there is better to protect them using fault tolerance. Um, as I mentioned earlier, configuring dump locations somewhere on the network or even creating a partition on the host. Uh, is very important so you don't lose those, those dump files which are very important and also another thing which I personally suffered is that you need to have a remote console to ASXi just in order to, to be able to recover that host you need to reboot it and if you don't have a remote console either ILO, IDRAC or IMM then you actually need to drive to the data center and push the button which is probably a nightmare in the middle of the night yeah <laughs> in the winter in the winter <laughs> yeah uh, or we can actually configure ESXi to restart after PSOD. There is a, um, an advanced configuration that you can do. But again, you would need to have the dump uh, location configured for that. Okay, Elin. Uh, well, that's a lot of information. Uh, but still, you know, I can understand. You know, what's the most important stuff here? Uh, and uh, thank you for uh, thank you for letting us know like how we can start fighting with a PSOD because. Uh, yeah, certainly that's not easy, but the impact is huge because many VMs are down if that really happens. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for that. And now we are closing, you know, uh, we are approaching the end of the session. Uh, so I would like to switch uh, for a moment uh, uh, to my screen and uh, finish up, you know, this webinar. Um, as you've seen, uh, and also what Aileen said a moment ago, I think it's very important that uh, you get rid of all of these manual uh, efforts of checking the patches, checking the potential issues, or studying, you know, somewhere in the back end uh, every other day what's new, uh, what has been released by a VMware uh, uh, and VMware KB portal. So this is where uh, we can really help you a lot with Runcast Analyzer, save you the time, effort, and mainly reduce the outages. This is, uh, I think, uh, uh, what most of the admins, you know, wants to do. Um, at the end, uh, I can only mention that uh, we'll be more than happy if you guys uh, will try and give it a try and download our uh, free trial. And by the way, right now, uh, we actually decide to add the Spectre and Meltdown uh, checks for free uh, forever. So uh, this functionality will be there uh, uh, all the time and you can check if your environments are properly fixed against Spectre and Meltdown. Uh, so please, you know, uh, Play with our tool. Uh, you have uh, two weeks of uh, trial uh, to detect um, the issues, best practices, or uh, security uh, compliance or our VMware hardline guides. And uh, also send us a feedback. As a young company, uh, we are really eager to build the best tool on the market, and uh, and we feel this is something special. Uh, so you, our users, uh, is uh, who are really listening to. At the end, uh, let me answer some questions. Uh, uh, so first question, uh, how does your software integrate with the rest of the uh, IT management software? That's a good question. Uh, so we have uh, the API, uh, we have the uh, REST API that can be leveraged to uh, receive uh, the data from the Runcast Analyzer and display it uh, in the other monitoring tools like Microsoft, uh, SolarWinds or SubGold and the others. And uh, also, uh, it can be uh, leveraged through the Power CLI, and uh, you know it can be used for uh, other custom integrations uh, with the ticketing systems as well. Also, we have a free uh, web plugin uh, to uh, the uh, vCenter Web Console. Uh, so, you, if you're using um, this interface a lot for uh, uh, checking the health of your infrastructure, then you can leverage our plugin, which displays the same issues we detect uh, as in this kind of uh, Runcast Analyzer web interface. So that's one question. Second question, uh, yeah, how often uh, do you update your database? Uh, depends on the priority. 
for example, with spectral and meltdown, we release daily uh, according to uh, the VMware reactions to the disk chip flows, vulnerabilities. Uh, but typically release on a weekly basis uh, with uh, uh, with the standard KB updates, and we are simply prepared to react anytime where there is a, a severe issue detected uh, on the KB portal, for example, the PSOD is a new one. Okay, uh, so time is up. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, on this call. Uh, we really appreciate your time. And uh, thank you for watching. We will continue with this series also in the future. Uh, if you also would like to have a, a question for a VMware expert, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, to the Innovate at Runecast.biz and send us your thought what you would like to know. And uh, it would be a good idea for uh, uh, the next webinars in the future. Thank you again. Thank you, Ellen, to be my host today. And uh, talk to you uh, next time. Thank you.